Goswamis, namely Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatana Goswami, Srila Jiva Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami, are all very expert in scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures with the aim of establishing eternal religious principles for the benefit of all human beings. Thus they are honoured all over the three worlds, and they are worth taking shelter of because they are absorbed in the mood of the gopis and engaged in the transcendental loving service of Radha and Krishna. We are going to continue reading from where we left off yesterday from the chapter entitled Evidence Regarding Devotional Principles. This is section headed, Giving Up the Company of Non-Devotees. Lord Chaitanya was once asked by one of his householder devotees what the general behaviour of a, of a Vaishnava should be. In this connection, Lord Chaitanya replied that a Vaishnava should always give up the company of non-devotees. Then he explained that there are two kinds of non-devotees. One class is against the su supremacy of Krishna and another class is too materialistic. In other words, those who are after material enjoyment and those who are against the supremacy of the Lord are called avaishnavas and their company should be strictly avoided. In the Kadyayana Samhita it is stated that even if one is forced to live within a cage, a cage of iron, or in the midst of a blazing fire, he should accept this position rather than live with non-devotees who are through and through against the supremacy of the Lord. 
Similarly, in the Vishnu Rahasya, there is a statement to the effect that one should prefer to embrace a snake, a tiger, or an alligator rather than associate with persons who are worshippers of various demigods and who are imp impelled by material desire. In the scriptures, it is instructed that one may worship a certain demigod if he is desirous of achieving some material gain. For example, one is advised to worship the sun god if he is desirous of getting rid of a disease condition. For a beautiful wife, one may worship Uma, the wife of Lord Shiva. And for advanced education, one may worship Saraswati. Similarly, there is a list in the Srimad Bhagavatam for worshippers of all demigods according to different material desires. But all of these worshippers, although they appear to be very good devotees of the demigods, are still considered to be non-devotees. They cannot be accepted as devotees. The Mayavadi impersonalists say that one may worship any form of the Lord and that it doesn't matter because one reaches the same destination anyway. But it is clearly stated in the Bhagavad Gita that those who are worshippers of the demigods will ultimately reach only the planets of the demigods, while those who are devotees of the Lord himself will be promoted to the Lord's abode, the kingdom of God. So actually these persons who are worshippers of demigods have been condemned in the Gita. It is described that due to their lusty desires, they have lost their intelligence and have therefore taken to worshipping the different demigods. So in the Vishnu Rahasya, these demigod worshippers are forcefully condemned by the statement that it is better to live with the most dangerous animals than to associate with these persons. So many important instructions here in this section in relation to giving up the association of non-devotees. Famous verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita where Lord Chaitanya says, Asat Sangha Tyag e Vaishnavacha, Stri Sangha Ekasadu Krishna Bhakti Ara. Right? A devotee must give up the association of the Asat. We have Sat Sangha, we don't have Asat Sangha. Asat Sangha is for the materialists. They associate with the temporary, with the material. We want to associate with the eternal. Therefore we are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and we are reading these scriptures every day. Okay, so we'll go on to read Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Narayanam namaskrityam Naram chaiva narottamam Daivim sarasatim vyasam Tato jaya mudirayat Nasta praeshu vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke 
bhakti bhavati naistiki. We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter Number 21, entitled Conversation Between Manu and Kadama, Text Number 19. Eka Swayam San Jagata Sishrikshaya Dviti Yayatman Adi Yoga Mayaya Sri Jashya Ada Pashi Puna Grasishyashe Yatoma Nabir Bhagavan Swa Shakti Bi Eka Swayam San Jagata Sisrikshaya Dvitya Yayatman Adi Yoga Mayaya Shri Jashya Adha Pasipunar Grasishya Se Yatorna Nabi Bhagavan Swas Shakti Bi Eka Swayam San Jagata Sishrikshaya Dviti Yayatman Adi Yoga Mayaya Shri Jashya Dapa Sipunar Grashishya Se Yatona Nabir Bhagavan Swashakti Bi Eka Swayam San Jagata Sishrikshaya Dviti Yayatman Adi Yoga Mayaya Shri Jashya Dapa Sipunar Grasishya Se Yatona Nabir Bhagavan Swashakti Bi Eka, one, 
Swayam, yourself, sun, being, Jagata, the universes, Sishrikshaya, with a desire to create, Advitiyaya, without a second, Atman, in yourself, Adi, controlling, Yoga Maya, ya. by Yoga Maya, Sri Jasi, you create, Ada, those universes, Pasi, you maintain, Puna, again, Grasishyase, you will wind up. Yata, like. Uritanabi, a spider. Bhagavan, O Lord. Swashaktibi, by its own energy. Translation My dear Lord, you alone create the universes. O personality of Godhead, desiring to create these universes, you create them, maintain them, and again wind them up by your own energies, which are under the control of your second energy called Yoga Maya. Just as a spider creates a cobweb by its own energy and again winds it up. You can repeat, my dear Lord, my dear Lord you, alone create you alone create the universes, the universes. O personality of Godhead, o desiring to create, desiring to create these, universes. these universes. You create them, create maintain them, maintain and again wind them up, wind them up. By, your by your own energies, which are under the control of your second energy called yoga maya. Just as a spider creates a cobweb by its own energy and again winds it up. Purport by Śrīla Prabhupāda. In this verse, two important words nullify the impersonalist, impersonalist theory that everything is God. Here, Kadama says, O Personality of Godhead, you are alone, but you have various energies. The example of the spider is very significant also. The spider is an individual living entity, and by its energy it creates a cobweb and plays with and plays on it and what whenever it likes it winds up the cobweb thus ending the play when the cobweb is manufactured by the saliva of the spider the spider does not become impersonal similarly the creation and manifestation of the material or spiritual energy does not render the creation the creator impersonal here the very prayer suggests that god is sentient and can hear the prayers and fulfill the desires of the devotee therefore he is satchid ananda vigraha the form of bliss knowledge and eternity Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Chalakaya Chaksuran Militan Genats Mai Shri Gurave Nama Vanchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patitanam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Kadadhar, Shri Vasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वेर हियरिंग द वर्ड्स ऑफ कारदामा मुनि एस ही एड्रेसेस मानव स्वयं भूप मानव एंड ही इज ग्लोरिफाइंग द लॉर्ड एस इज हिज ड्यूटी एज अ डिवोटी Yesterday we heard about the Lord's influence of time how by the influence of time everything is degrading decaying becoming uh useless so today we're hearing how the Lord not only creates but he maintains and then he also destroys there are three phases to the material manifestation there is the creation the maintenance and the destruction and so often we think well brahma is the creator vishnu is maintainer and shiva is the destroyer but here today we are hearing that actually all these things are done by the lord and of course he act he empowers different living entities like lord brahma and lord shiva and so on they are empowered to do different duties brahma to do creation and lord shiva to destroy it's all going on under the direction however of the supreme lord it said it's only when the lord gives the order that the creation takes place brahma doesn't do it on his own Brahma actually only does he's responsible for the secondary phase of the creation. He's more like the engineer. The engineer is taking the parts and put, putting them together. But somebody has to make the parts, right? So in the same way in the in the case of the cosmic manifestation, there are the 26 elements of material nature. Now Brahma doesn't create them; they're created by the Supreme Lord. But Brahma takes the elements and he utilizes them to create the different bodies of the living entities, and he creates all, puts the different planets in position, doing different functions like that. So, of course, he's doing great service, but it's also done. by empowerment from the lord without being empowered by the lord we cannot do anything we have to recognize the importance of being empowered by krishna right just like in chaitanya charitamrita it is said kali yuga dharma hari naam sankirtan krishna shakti vini nahi tara pravartan that in the kali yuga the dharma is the chanting of the holy name but one has to be empowered with krishna shakti in order to transmit the holy name in order to distribute it everywhere so of course shrila prabhupad had that empowerment coming through the disciplic succession he was empowered to distribute the holy name and he empowered people also on his behalf to go everywhere he sent out the devotees there was empowerment so in the case of uh, the material manifestation there is the lord's secondary energy yoga maya right there's not simply the lord but the lord also has energies and of course uh the lord is uh, busy enjoying his pastimes in the spiritual world he doesn't have to do everything just like prophet was with ambrish fort prophet went to detroit and uh, um, um, ambrish fort was there prophet's disciple you know grandson of henry fort so they were driving the car to the temple and they came past one of the factories of the ford motor company they came past the comp- the big factory and brahmananda proper secretary was there with them and 
Brahmananda saw the big factory and he turned to Ambarish and said, is that, is that where you work? And Prabhupada intervened and Prabhupada said, he is the owner, he does not work there. He is the proprietor, he does not work, right? So the same way, the Lord is the proprietor of everything. He doesn't have to do anything on his own. If you own the business, you know, you don't have to go to work every day. You get people to work for you. You get responsible people to work on your behalf. Just like these big multinational businesses, you know, Birla's and uh, Ambani's and all these different companies, you know, big companies in India. You know, they, 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 these people, they don't need to go to work. You know, they can be at home, they can enjoy social life. They go to parties and social life and sit in the Lions Club and Rotary Clubs and these kind of things, you see. Enjoy the social life, you see. So similarly, actually, what they're doing is just an imitation of what the Supreme Lord is doing. The Supreme Lord Krishna, he has his different energies who are all working on his behalf. He doesn't need to do everything himself. Just like in Fifth Avenue, Rockefeller, if you go to New York, right, on New York Fifth Avenue, Prabhupada called it the most, the, the, the most famous or most important street in the world. So on Fifth Avenue, there's this big place called Rockefeller Center. There's like some mall and stuff, some gardens, and people walk around there. And there's this big statue, of a big bronze statue, huge. It would fill this room. Big statue of this personality from Greek philosophy, Atlas. Atlas. And he's picking up the earth planet from the bottom of the universe. And Atlas, you know, he's really muscular. You know, he's like one of these guys, one of the ads for a, for a gym or something like that, you know, where they were lifting weights all day, building the body, building the muscles. So Atlas is just huge. He's got this big muscular body and he's picking up the earth planet from the bottom of the universe. So sometimes people think, that, oh, Krishna has to pick up Govardhan Hill, he must also have muscles, he must also be very strong, you know. So, at one point, when they were drawing Krishna's picture, they gave Krishna these big muscular arms, you know. And they made him look like he'd been, you know, going to the weightlifting. And Prabhupada said, no, what is this? He said, Krishna doesn't need muscles to do this kind of stuff, you know. Krishna has a, a transcendental body which is Satchit Ananda, eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. That is the form of Krishna. His body is not like our body, blood and bones and muscles and veins and these horrible things. His body is eternity, full of bliss and knowledge. And he is enjoying eternally with his devotees. But he has to oversee the different affairs of the creation. And for that purpose he has his different energies. And principal energy is yoga maya. Yoga maya, right? Just like it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, Yoga Maya. Naham prakasha sarvatma yoga maya samavrita. Mudu yamna bijanati loka mama jamavyayam. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. For them, I am covered by my eternal creative potency, yoga maya. So this is one of the functions of Krishna's energy, you see. Impersonalists, they think there is only energy. They don't think there can be any possessive of the energy. They think everything is just energy. 
Somebody was telling me, I know Krishna cannot be God. Krishna took birth. He has a mother and father. And then he told me, Shiva is God. Shiva is light. Right? So light, this is how he understood God. Simply some impersonal energy. People think that if God is a person, he must be a person like us. But he's not like us. He's a transcendental person. In Bhagavad Gita, the verse is there. Abhijananti mammudha manushim tanamashrita paramba parambhava majananto mamabhuta maheshwaram. Krishna is saying, the foolish mock at me descending amongst them like an ordinary human being. They do not know my transcendental nature and supreme dominion over all that be. So they think that because Krishna has a body, because he has a form, he must be an ordinary person like us. That he must take birth and he lives for some time, then he grows old and he dies. You know, some people, if you ask them, what does God look like? What does God look like? They think, oh, he's an old man with a big beard, you know, and he's bent up and, you know, because he's very old, you know, he's the beginning of every, he's the oldest. So it must be, his hair is all gone white and he's all wrinkled and like, so they think of him like that. They think he has a material body. They cannot understand the transcendental nature of Lord Krishna's form. That his form is transcendental. He does not age. We were talking yesterday how even the devotees, actually they're meant that when they're fully and properly engaged in devotional service, they become immune to the effects of karma and they become immune to the effects of time by engaging in Krishna's service. In the same way, Lord Krishna is not under the effects of karma. He doesn't age, he doesn't grow old. He is the controller of karma. The material nature moves under his direction. Described in Bhagavad Gita, mayadyakshena prakriti suyate sacharachara Lord Krishna is saying, this material nature moves under my direction, O son of Kunti. Right? Material nature is not independent. And this was realized by Srila Vyasadeva. After he was instructed by Narada Muni, then Srila Vyasadeva sat in contemplation and he saw the Supreme Lord, and he saw the material nature under the full control of the Lord. So, impersonalists and materialists, they cannot understand this. They think everything is just simply energy, and they call that energy Brahman. They're thinking everything is Brahman. Yet, there is Brahman, but there is also the Supreme Brahman, and the Supreme Brahman, just like the deities. What is the form of the deity? Ordinary people may look at the deity and may think, oh, very nice stone, nice statue. But actually, the form of the deity is Satchidananda. And just like the Lord incarnates, the deities are also incarnations of the Lord. The Lord has many, many forms and avatars. And these deities are also avatars of the Supreme Lord. The Lord has kindly appeared here in the form of these deities. Just like the Lord has his different incarnations. And these are also incarnations of the Lord. They have come for to give us the opportunity of serving and learning how to serve the Lord. So, Kardama Muni is describing how the Lord has his energy and he uses his energy 
to create this material manifestation. Not only does he create it, but he also maintains it. Right? He maintains it. Uh, in, in, in Brahma Samhita it is also described how this work is done by Mother Durga. Shristi stiti praya sadhana satirika chaye vayasya bhuvanani vibhakti durga echan rupam apiyasya chatestate sa govindam adipursam tamaham bhajami. Right? Lord Brahma is describing the, the creating, maintaining, and annihilating deity of the mundane world is worshipped by all people as who? Huh? How is the creating and, and maintaining and annihilating deity worship? Who is that? It is Durga, Mother Durga. She is the, the energy of the Lord, right? There's the male and there's the female. So the energy of the Lord, the Mother Durga. She is the, this is a manifestation of the person. She is the controlling deity of the material energy. And she works. She moves like a shadow under the direction of the Supreme Lord. Just like we have shadows on the marble floor, on the granite floor here in the temple room. The shadow does not move independently. The shadow is under the control of the object. So in the same way the material nature is under the full control of the possessor of that energy. Who is it? the source of the energy of the material world? That is Govinda, Krishna himself. Right? He is the controller. So material nature moves like a shadow under the control of Govinda. So, so this Yoga Maya feature of the Lord is the Lord's energy. And energy, we know it can be used in different ways. We have electricity, you can use electricity for lighting, you can use it for heating, you can use it for cooling. Different effects. In the same way, Yoga Maya also has, works in different ways. I quoted the verse from Bhagavad Gita where Krishna is saying, the yoga maya covers him up from the devotees, uh, from the non-devotees, from the foolish and the unintelligent. They are covered by this yoga maya. But the same, that yoga maya can also be used to cover up the vision of a devotee so that the devotee will see the Lord in a particular rasa. They will see the Lord like their child. Just like Mother Yashoda, she can only think of Krishna as her child. She cannot think of Krishna as God. That would disturb her rasa. Even when Krishna opens his mouth, Mother Yashoda had heard that Krishna had been eating dirt. And Krishna said, Oh, Mummy, no, I've not. Balaram's not speaking the truth about me. And so then Mother Yashoda said, open your mouth, let me see. And Krishna opened his mouth and Mother Yashoda looked into the mouth of Krishna and she saw the whole cosmic manifestation. She saw all the planets and the universes and she saw within Krishna's mouth, she herself was there looking into the mouth of Krishna. And so Mother Yashoda saw this but then she thought, oh, this is, maybe I have to chant some mantras to protect my son. Maybe there's some evil things. When Krishna kills Putana, Mother Yashoda takes the cow urine and chants many prayers for the protection of her child. And when Krishna picks up Govardhan Hill, Mother Yashoda said, Oh, my son, he couldn't do it. It must be my husband picking up the Govardhan Hill. So Mother Yashoda, she can only think of Krishna as her child. Why? Because yoga maya. Krishna enjoys having a mother and father. It's part of his enjoyment. If, if we, we have a mother and father, we can enjoy having pa parents. Why Krishna cannot have parents? 
Krishna also likes to enjoy these things and he selects his great devotees to be his parents. This is Yoga Maya. In Yoga Maya also some people are Krishna's friends and some people are Krishna's lovers. Like the gopis, they can dance with Krishna and give so much pleasure to Krishna. So all of these rasas are arranged for the pleasure of Krishna. Krishna likes to enjoy with devotees. Yoga Maya facilitates Krishna's enjoyment. And, but Yoga Maya also facilitates the creation of the mundane world. Why do we have to create a material world? Because there are people who are against the supremacy of the Lord. They don't want to serve the Lord. They don't want to surrender. So the material world is like the prison house. Just like in every country there's a prison and a small number of citizens are in the jail because they don't follow the laws of the state. So in the same way, people who are against the laws of the Supreme Lord, they're placed into this material world, what is called Daividam, the realm of the demigods, Daividam, world of birth and death, where there is samsara. They were put into this material existence. Why? It's our desire. We desire to be independent of the Lord. We don't want to surrender. We don't want to be his devotee. So we come into this world. And we're in this world. There are two purposes behind the material creation. One is to facilitate our attempts to enjoy the material world. And the other is to give us an opportunity to restore ourselves and to purify our existence so that we can become eligible to go back home, back to the Lord's abode. Sometimes we become intelligent enough and we think about life and we understand that this material world is not a very happy place. As described in Bhagavad Gita, it is Dukalaya. It is a place of misery all over from the highest to the lowest, it's all miserable, suffering. Even the demigods are suffering. And we think how to get free. And when we're fortunate, we contact the pure devotees who guide us, who show us a path back to Godhead, how to get out of this material world. So the material world is there to facilitate that that we can become liberated, we can get free from the bondage of material life. So all of this is arranged under the spell of Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya, Krishna's energies. Krishna's energies are not different from Krishna. And so some people worship the energy without understanding that there's a controller behind the energy. Just like you, you can worship the energy. You can worship, but you should have, we have to understand that it is simply the energy of the Lord, that it is not the Supreme Lord. You can take a blade of grass and worship that, but you have to understand that it's the Lord which, who is within the atoms, who is the creator of the grass. So we, we have to understand everything in the proper way. And the impersonalists, they, they also offer prayers, but who are they offering prayers to? Because they say there's no God, or we're all God. Then why are they offering prayers? They recite prayers. In Buddhism also, they recite prayers. And they say there's nothing, ultimately nothing is real. So why are they praying? What are they praying for? doesn't make any sense. They have a philosophy, but they don't follow their philosophy. So a devotee offers prayers to the Supreme Lord. We're praying to the Lord, just like the deity is here. We offer prayers to the deity every day. When we perform kirtan, 
It is our glorification of the Lord. Our prayers, our mantras are for His pleasure. We want to, we, we want to understand our relationship with Him. He is the Master. We are His servants. We want to please Him by our devotion. And offering prayers is a manner in which we manifest our devotion. Deity worship is very important. By deity worship, you can perform all nine ki kinds of bhakti yoga. In the process of deity worship, you can be engaged in all the different angas of bhakti. Shravanam, Kirtan, Smaranam, Vandam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Dashyam, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam. All the nine kinds, are, they're there in deity worship. If one performs the deity worship in the proper manner. In the, if one is very meditative and attentive in performing the deity worship, then all of the nine angas are there within that service. Very powerful. But often, we're not so conscious. Just like when we're chanting, we're doing kirtan, we don't think we're offering prayers to the Lord. We forget that the deity can hear, the deity is a person, the deity eats, we offer food. If the deity eats everything, we'll be angry. Why the deity is eating everything? But the deity is a person. He can hear, he sees, he can walk, he can talk. We have to understand, we have to become more conscious how, how, how serious, how, what a great responsibility we have been given that these wonderful forms of the Lord have appeared here and we have the opportunity to engage in their service. We must take full advantage. Okay, any question? Yes, Prabhu? Any question? No? Prabhu? Swami says, actually, I think they better better talk about the good person. Prabhupada says, we go parallel with the dual railway track. One is Bhagavad Gita and Pancharatra Vidhi. And some say only Bhagavad Gita is important, Pancharatra Vidhi is not important. The Marishman enlightened Vidhi on that. Uh-huh. Bhagavad Gita and Pancharatra Vidhi. Yeah. No, we have both in our Krishna consciousness movement. The Bhagavad Gita and the Pancharatra Vidhi, they have to both be there. Yeah, we have. We don't just only preach. The Bhagavata Vidhi is the preaching. Now if we just go out every day and preach and we don't have regulation, we don't do spiritual practice, it won't be good. We won't have the potency. We won't be able to keep going for very long. So Prabhupada uh, very carefully set up the Krishna consciousness movement that not only are we preaching, but we're also performing Panchara Trikividi. We're also doing regular worship and taking part in the different devotional activities in the temple every day. Very important for us to keep our regulation and to keep up our standards. Not just only preaching, go out preaching, go out preaching, preaching, preaching. You know, like sometimes, you know, we, we do sometimes have a marathon, we go out on a marathon, but you need to also chant your rounds those days. You don't just go out all day and night and don't chant and don't hear. You have to do also sadhana. Even though marathon is going on, you have to continue the chanting and you have to have some reading. Otherwise, you'll forget why you're doing it all and you become discouraged and one day you just go away and give up if you don't do proper sadhana. And so it's important also that we're not just only worshipping the deity. The people who worship the deity 
they also need to go for preaching. They need both. Because if you just sit in the temple all day and worship the deity, you'll forget about how miserable the material world is and how much suffering there is in this material world. And we'll just be sitting, tenting here and moving, and we think all oh, those fools out there working and going to work and suffering. And we won't have any compassion. So it's very important that we have both in our practice of spiritual life, that we do some worship of the deity, and we also go out for preaching, perform sankirtan, go to programs, distribute books. These things are very important. We need to go out there and meet the people and see what's going on in the world and see the condition, how miserable the, the life is in this material world. And then we'll become more serious in our Krishna consciousness. But if we just sit in the temple all day, it's very good for us, but it's not very good for our spiritual progress after a while. We need to go out also and see the condition and we need to show compassion on the people, distributing Krishna consciousness to them. It's a very important part of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said everyone should join the Sankirtan party. And so if we just think we worship the deity, I'm doing everything, I'm worshipping the deity, I'm a puja. It's not enough. You need to also go out and preach. You need to join the Sankirtan. You need to go out there and see what, what the material world is and how, how much of a struggle there is out there. So both are there, both Pancharatriki and Bhagavata Vidhi. Both are important for devotees, for devotees who are serious to advance in their Krishna consciousness. They need to do both, come to temple program, worship the deities, and then go out also and do preaching work. Any other questions? Yes? Uh, we can understand that Mark says now that the deities just walk, just eat, and they say, bro. So, uh, the, my question is that the moment now we think about this, the consciousness of we think about this, then the next moment we forget about it, we easily be powered, overpowered by uh, initially energy, and we start behaving and doing normal things rather than having this consciousness all day long. So, how to keep up with this consciousness? <coughs> How to keep our consciousness to remember that the deity is a person, that the deity has activities, senses. We have to hear. We have to keep hearing regularly because we're, our brains are so dull that even though we hear, we don't remember. So we have to hear and hear and hear again and again and again. Therefore Prabhupada preached so many times, you're not the body, you're not the body, you're not the body. Because Prabhupada knew how thick-skinned and how dumb we are, that we have to hear these things again and again and again. You have to be told, you have to be reminded. It's not enough just one time. You have to constantly hear. That's why we have to hear, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. We have to regularly hear the Srimad Bhagavata. Regularly means every day. There must every day we have to take some time. If you're not going to sit in the class, then you have to study Srimad Bhagavatam on your own. But you have to hear every day. It's very important. If you don't hear, then the conditioning comes. The Maya comes. And Maya is very powerful. We don't even notice it. Although we hear so easily, so quickly we forget everything. So very important to regularly, faithfully hear. Try to fix it in our mind. Well, that's why we have also we memorize different verses from the Shastra, 
very important for us also. If you do Bhakti Shastri, you have to memorize so many verses from Bhagavad Gita. Right? It's a very good exercise for us. And if you go on and do Bhakti Vaibhav, you have to memorize so many more verses. And then if you do deity worship, if you study the deity worship course in my there's so many verses, so many mantras they have to memorize. Right? Th this is how we fix our mind. We start to remember. Mm -hmm. Chanting mantras, reciting, all these things helps us to remember. Who is Krishna and who am I? Krishna is the master, I am his son. Yeah? Any other question? When Kirani Yatasudu went to see the Lord, he couldn't see the Lord. But he's asking, yeah, when you went to the Lord, they said he's standing in front of you. Is that a coverage of Yoga Maya for him? Or is it the consciousness you cannot see that? Haranya Kashipu asked Prahlad, where is this God? Right? And Prahlad said, he is everywhere, Father. Prahlad Maharaj, he is Uttama Adhikari. So he could see the Lord everywhere, in everything. But, of course, Father Aranyakashipu, he couldn't see. But, when he, then he asked, is he in the pillar? And when he, then from the pillar, Lord Narsingadev came up. Because when he asked, is he in here, Prahlad said, yes, he's there. He's everywhere, because Prahlad see, could see the Lord everywhere, in everything. Haranyakashipu couldn't see. Why? Yoga Maya. Yeah. Krishna said, I am never manifest to the foolish and unintelligent. This is Yoga Maya. Or you could say Maha Maya. Maha Maya is a, a division of Yoga Maya. The electricity works in different ways. So Yoga Maya also works in different ways. And when she works as Maha Maya, then it's covering up. Hi, covering up from to hi, from the do from the non devotees. Okay, any other question? Well, yes, everything is Krishna's energy. Everything is Krishna's energy. But there's spiritual energy and material energy. There's a spiritual nature and the material nature. So the spiritual nature is Satchit Ananda. Material nature, Bhumerapo Nalovayu. Earth, water, fire, air. This is the material nature. So there's some difference. What is what is matter and what is spirit? But it's all Krishna's energy. We need Krishna's mercy. Yoga Maya's mercy. You need Krishna's mercy. Krishna's mercy comes by the mercy of the spiritual master. You get the mercy of Krishna. So serving the Vaishnavas is very important. <coughs> if we can please the Vaishnavas, if we can serve the Vaishnavas, then it's pleasing to Lord Krishna. And if we displease the Vaishnavas, then Krishna is also not pleased. So very important to deal carefully, to deal nicely, affectionately with the devotees. Get the blessings of the devotees. 
Yeah. If the devotees bless us, then Krishna will be pleased. But if we quarrel and argue and make enemies with devotees, then that's very bad. Then we'll get a lot of problems. We we'll have to be very careful in dealing, how we deal, how we interact with the devotees. Spiritual life is like on the edge of the razor. You use the razor, you have to be very careful. A little inattention and we get caught. So the same way, dealing with devotees, and sometimes we think, oh, he's not a devotee. <laughs> we should think, I'm not a devotee. We should think everyone else is a devotee. I am not a devotee. I'm trying to become a devotee. So we have to be very careful. Get the mercy of the devotees. That's very important for us. Okay? Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki.